Hi, I'm here with Andrew Allman today of Domain Name Wire. And while he's very well known in the industry, I wanted to give him a couple minutes to explain what he does and how he um, started with Domain Name Wire. Sure, so Domain Name Wire is the longest running blog covering the business of domain names. I started writing it in 2005. Uh, at the time, there were no blogs really covering the business of domain names. Ron Jackson, of course, has his excellent site, but it wasn't yes. a daily news site. Uh, so I started that, been writing it ever since, uh, coming up on 12 years, I guess, mm -hmm. we're in 2017. And I also have a companion podcast, the Domain Name Wire podcast, right. which is, uh, we're up to episode 120 now, beginning here in uh, 2017. So. And you also do a couple other things too, right? Like you have the, uh, the podcast, um, service where you connect people that want to be on podcasts with podcasts. Yeah, yeah. So I do some things on the side. I have um, it's called podcastguests.com. I bought that domain in the aftermarket, um, and it's it connects podcasters that want to be on a podcast with guests. Uh, or sorry, podcasters looking for guests with people that want to be a guest on podcasts. And then uh, my wife's a journalist. She has a, a couple of publications related to the Internet of Things. So I okay. assist her with that. She's a, a much more. She's a real journalist. Uh -huh. She's a famous one, uh, whereas I'm a, a lowly hack, but uh, so I, I work with her on that as well. Oh, you do a great job and everybody really looks forward to what you post. I was just talking with one of my friends and he said, I, I check your blog five times a day. Just That's to see awesome. If That's awesome stuff. to hear. That's awesome to hear. So I have a question for you about how you got started. You said it was 12 years ago. What initially got you into this? What made you think, hey, I really want to write a blog? And, and how has that um, interest in writing the blog changed over time? Like, where did you get started? What was your reason and purpose? And right. kind of how has that evolved to what your reason and purpose for doing things are now? Well, it started as a, as a hobby, really. And I was working with a company at the, uh, working to found a company in a domain space at that time back in 2005 and uh -huh. decided not to do it for a number of reasons. Uh, and it ended up being the right decision because that company grew a lot and then imploded. Uh -huh. But I was like, you know, okay, so I've got this extra time, what do I want to do? I was founding another company at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it really started as a hobby on the side and then it took off and now it's become, uh, you know, it's, it's my business, right? I mean, right. I do buy and sell domain names, I'm active there, and, and as I mentioned earlier, I have some other businesses. But uh, writing the blog, which is, um, makes all of its money through sponsorships, that's mm -hmm. my business now. And, and it's really, uh, it's a really fulfilling job. You know, I get, it's great to hear when you talk to someone and they say, hey, uh, you know, I'd check his blog five right. times a day. Um, you know, having people come up at the conference that thank me for an article that helped, I have people that reach out all the time saying, hey, that article, I made a lot of money because you pointed me in the right direction there. Oh, that's um, great. And I was able to take advantage of it, so. Well, what do you think the purpose of your blog is? Like, what's, what's your reason for doing it and what do you really want people to get out of it if you were, you know, to kind of sum that up? It's fairly broad. Um, I think my audiences are domain investors. There are domain registrars like GoDaddy. Um, there are domain registries, the legal side of the business. Uh, if I were to base it on the questions that I get asked a lot, it's questions about legality and cyber squatting. Mm -hmm. It's questions about value of domain names. So I think some of my articles that help people understand the value of their domain names um, are very useful to mm -hmm. people. But I think it's it's also a, it's an industry resource. Right. This is a it's a niche industry. It's probably a five billion dollar a year industry, but it's still a niche when you right. look at right. you know. And a lot of businesses are come, well, GoDaddy's worth more than that now. But you know, uh, there are a lot of businesses that are much larger industry wise. So I think it's important for us to have a um, a good meeting point, a good a good focal point beyond. Uh, in the forums like name pros, but to, to have a place that's getting news out there. My news stories go in Google News, right. so there's quite a bit of reach mm -hmm. that goes outside of just the people that are in this room, mm -hmm. including small business owners that are trying to figure out, how do I buy this domain name? Right. Or should I consider a new top level mm -hmm. domain? Or you know, what should I do on the hosting side? That sort of thing. So it, it, do, it does reach beyond that and it brings more people in. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because it, it's something I think about a lot when, when I read your blog is there's a lot more people that are reading it than just our small community. And right. I, I wonder, do you see yourself as uh, kind of an evangelist for the community to let people know what's going on mm -hmm. uh, that are outside of domain investing? I do, but I give a caveat there, which is I don't look at myself as a cheerleader for the industry mm -hmm. and that you know sometimes companies in the space do bad things right. um, or things that aren't customer friendly and I'll mm -hmm. write about that. Sure. Um, 
and there are things you know in this business like every business that we need to change and you know, right. right about what we need to change so so yes but I don't look at myself as a, as a cheerleader so I think evangelist in a number of ways one making people understand that the main buyers and sellers are not all squatters they're right. good people that's I think that's something that you know I'll get a lot of messages where I talk to people uh -huh. outside the space and I'm sure you get this too oh yeah. those squatters yeah. uh -huh. that sort of thing so explaining how um, you know, that's not really what this is about and, you know, if the person who owns the domain name that you want to buy didn't own it, someone else would. You right, know, it's, exactly. not, it's yeah. not their yep. fault, you know, so, uh, so I think there, there is a bit of that. You've been doing it for 12 years. What really keeps you at it? What gets you excited about doing it every day? Because you, you do post uh, pretty consistently, so mm -hmm. what gets you to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the feedback and the responses from people are good. It's always good to see commenting on a blog to know that people are listening, they are paying attention, they get value out of it. You know, there's obviously a financial aspect of it now. This is where I make the bulk of yeah, money sure. from sponsorships. So that keeps me going. Um, but it's also the relationships I forge through it, mm -hmm. getting to really know people that this is, there'll probably be 1,400 people at this conference, uh -huh. being able to actually know a lot of the people and, and have a prior relationship with them, I think is good as well. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's exciting about kind of being out there a little bit more is that you get to meet a lot more people because mm -hmm. they feel a little more comfortable to come up and talk to you since they know well, who you are. You probably feel that too. I mean, you for a while you were kind of under the radar yeah. in the industry and now you've gotten your name out there more. It's, it's yeah, good. it's great to have people come up to you and just say, hey, you know, I got something from what you shared. That, right. That's exciting. Right. So that, that's what keeps me excited about doing it. Good. You share a lot of information that, frankly, you know, I'm in the industry, I don't know, 12, 14 hours a day at least for 12 years, and you share stuff that sometimes catches me that I, I didn't know was going to happen, mm -hmm. like uh, a merger with another company mm -hmm. or a new patent that came out, mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff that it's pretty much breaking news mm -hmm. in the industry, and I wonder... How, how do you find those things out and, and how are you able to share those you know pretty much as soon as it happens or right before it happens right there are a couple there are a couple things going on there one is I've cultivated a lot of good relationships with the people watching this video the people uh -huh. in the industry and so when they have news a lot of times they'll come to me first uh -huh. and give it to me under embargo right um, so that they can do more than you know they know I don't just reprint press releases right. so they'll get some executives on the line uh -huh. to talk about it and what it means okay. beyond the fluffy quotes in the press right. release um, and then a lot of stuff they probably don't want me to find out about, but because I have the source network, I hear yeah. about it uh, ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then there are also you know, patents or resources to get alerts through right. that. SEC filings are another mm -hmm. big source of information. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office database. Mm -hmm. um, UDRPsearch.com is a great site to find right. UDRP uh, results. So there are a number of sources there that I get triggered alerts from. And then a lot of times people will email me and say, hey, did you see this post on name pros? This is interesting. Mm -hmm. I haven't read about it on any blogs. Or here's a news article I'm surprised no one's written about. Right. What do you think? And, mm -hmm. and so that's another part of, I call it my source network. Okay. Well, then uh, that brings up a good point. It's another thing that I've wondered a lot about is, you know, you bring up SEC filings. A lot of those filings are very big, right? <laughs> so I wonder, how do, you, how do you comb through those filings to, to find pertinent information that people would want for domains? Right. And, and I'll kind of piggyback off that, you also publish names, um, I think it's weekly, of anyone who's an end user who makes a sale or, or a purchase of a name, excuse me. And that must take a lot of research too, so I was wondering if you'd um, be open to share like how much time that takes for you to be able to research these things right. to get the news out. The SEC filings can be tricky if it's like comparing quarterly reports compared uh -huh. to another one. There was a service I was using for a little while called Intelligize mm -hmm. that would actually draw up a comparison okay. between a red line between mm -hmm. Q1 and Q2, okay. which is helpful sometimes. Uh, there are other tools that will compare PDFs. But a lot of times it's just reading them and saying, wait a minute, that, that looks new, and then right. going back and looking at the previous SEC report mm -hmm. uh, to look. The end user reports, that's something I do weekly, mm -hmm. as you said, and right now my only data source for them is, is CETO. Um, okay. I'd love to get after Nick to share data uh -huh. again. Uh, but the, what I do there is I take CETO's sales list, pull it into Watch My Domains, which uh -huh. is uh, software for managing a domain portfolio, actually. Okay. But I can quickly pull into who is records there and see who's 
who looks like an end user that bought a domain okay. name. It does take an hour to two hours a week to do that. I have it down fairly, fairly simple now, but Cito's only revealing their sales over $2,000 now. Right, right. So it is a smaller list, which at first I was like, oh man, when they reduced it, how am I going to get as many good quality sales? Uh -huh. The list is down, but it's actually, I'm able to focus more on it. So I feel like I'm able to get a similar number of end user sales. And that's fascinating because you see how much end users are paying for domains. Right. And sometimes they'll be, Recently, there was a $25 billion company that paid $3,000 for a domain name. And you ask yourself, why? Well, I'd say two things there. One, maybe the seller didn't know the pockets of the end user. But I'd right. also say, having worked at large companies before, a lot of times their budget isn't that big. Right. And people need to understand yeah. that. It could be a division within the right, company. Exactly. If it's a company rebranding, sure, right. they've got a big budget. But if it's a project for a certain division within the company, right. One, they might not have a budget of more than five or $10,000. Uh, two, they might have backup names. Right. And we've all had those situations where we have a pretty good offer for a domain, we pass on it, and we never hear a thing again from someone yeah, five, true. 10 years later. Mm -hmm. Other times we have you know, several offers from people, and we're right. glad that we didn't take that first offer that came along. But uh, you know, this business is not a very, domain trading is not a very efficient business. And that's one thing I think about as a domain seller, as right. a as a domain buyer and seller, the you know bird in hand could sometimes be better than two in the bush. That's true. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely common for people to look at a couple different names when they come out, unless mm -hmm. it's their their main brand and they want really want to go with I, it. If they're starting something new, a lot of times they have a couple options. I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I'll help people buy a domain name, a friend buy a uh -huh. domain name, and I'll tell the person, you know, look, we're looking at a few right. different domains. This is the budget. Mm -hmm. And they'll sometimes as a negotiating tactic. I do right. the same thing. Yep. I'm not criticizing yep. them, but I do the same thing. They'll say, "Well, no, uh, this this matter nothing," and we move on. Right. We move on to yep. another another name. So I, that's a very good point in that um, you need to put yourself on the other side of the, of the table. Yeah. You know, in negotiating, they call it the BATNA, the best alternative right, right. to a negotiated uh -huh. agreement. And it's good whenever you negotiate mm -hmm. to know that. As a seller, you want to say, "Hey, if this customer." Central buyer doesn't buy the domain name. What am I going to do with the domain? Right, exactly. How much am I am I willing to hold on to it for five more years for a chance of someone coming along? Yeah. And as a buyer, you have to say, Hey, look, this is my bottom line. At this point, I'm going to move on to another domain. Right. Name. So speaking about other domains, um, we have the new GTLDs that came out. Now they're not so new; they've been around for a couple of years. Yeah, several. Uh, now, yeah. And we've been able to see more and more companies using them as uh, as their main brand, especially when they're starting out, or um, for bigger companies to use as like niche marketing. You know, they want to reach a certain right. area or to be able to track things. So I've seen it grow over time, um, but you know, obviously it's not exploded yet. What, what do you think would be? two or three things that the new TLDs could, could do to help them to continue to grow and to right. stay on the right trajectory. You know, you bring up the exploding issue, and I think for a while there, I thought there was going to be, not when it came out, but some key event. Je Jeff Sass over at uh, Doc Club calls it the twerking moment when uh -huh. Miley Cyrus did that twerking thing on stage uh -huh. a few years ago, and all of a sudden everyone knew the term twerking, right? right? right. I'm not so sure that's going to happen anymore for domain names. Right. I think that um, for new top level domains, I think it's more of a slow trickle. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's catching on. You know, I, I have an office uh, near my daughter's school. I'll pick her up from school. And on the way home now, I pass two new top level domains within 100 yards of each other. Okay. One is data.world, uh -huh. startup in Austin. And then I get to the intersection, and there's this uh, health clinic, and they're using a dot clinic domain name. Okay. So they are getting out there. Yeah. Uh, as far as how they can get out there more, I think, A, it comes to usage, mm -hmm. which is just what I'm speaking of there. Right. When someone sees data.world, and I'm, I believe it's arc.clinic, you know, the first time they're like, huh? Right. And then they see the www before the arc.clinic, right. and they're like, oh, it's a domain name. And then maybe they, they're in healthcare, mm -hmm. and they look it up and they see, oh, there's dot doctor as well, right. there's dot ed, medic, I, I don't know if these are all real or not, right. I know dot doctor is, but... And so I think that sort of usage begets usage is a right. key thing. So anything registries can do to get people to use the domain names mm -hmm. is key. We look at these numbers, oh, we registered a million domains in this top level domain, but they were sold for a dollar, it's right. all domain investors. That, that looks nice, but it's window dressing. Mm -hmm. um, actually seeing people use it, I think, is key. So 
uh, these pioneer programs that companies right, have yeah. used. Dot Cloud did a great job with that, getting yeah. companies in the cloud space and outside of the cloud space to use their domain names. Club has been big on yes. that. There, there are a number. XYZ has actually done an excellent job. Yeah, There's a lot of block. noise there because they do the volume game as well, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of companies using XYZ. Right. And then once one uses it, once HBO used Hulu, right. XYZ, uh -huh. and um, what's the name of that Google. show? Google. Uh, yeah, Google did yeah. it. I'm trying to, uh, Silicon Valley is the name right, of the right. show that they, and then Google did. And I guarantee you, it had something to do with it. They kind of made right. a reference in, uh -huh. They thought about XYZ because of Huli.xyz. So, right. uh, so I think that's key. Another thing is on the registrar side, search. Mm -hmm. Give a lot of credit to right side for investing right. a lot of money in this. Uh, GoDaddy has invested a lot mm -hmm. of money in it. We're still at a point though, you go to most registrars and if I'm looking, if I put truck something in there, they aren't going to give me vehicle related top right. level demand. Exactly. So the third thing that uh, you know will really help grow grow these new top level domains is end user marketing. Now, I know for a registry, it might not have a positive ROI right away to go out and um, you know market to end users, get them to use the domain names. But I think this really, well, it meshes with the first thing I said, which is use begets use. And if you get end users to start using your domain names, someone else is going to see them, get interested in them, and, and use them as well. Yeah, I think getting the word out is definitely important because the more people that are actually seeing it, like you brought up with the clinic example, the more people are going to say, you know what, that might be an option for me to use for my business. Right. So, When you're uh, online using name pros, you, we brought it up before that you use it to uh, see new posts that are coming out as part of your sources for news. Um, what other things do you do you like to use name pros for? Yeah, really you know, you it's funny, I said this last year when they recorded this video, and I'll say it again, which is, I want to get more involved with that. You know, we really only have one domain forum now. Um, I should be careful I say it. There's some great niche domains, smaller, but one open, large domain forum out there. And so uh, I plan to get more involved with it here in 2017. You know, I recently found a story on there um, that I then, you know, did some research, posted on my blog. And uh, it really, a lot of people had comments on it. And so I think it's important. A lot of times, even us domain bloggers say, oh, well, Elliot already wrote about it, or Michael already wrote about it, I'm not going to write about it. And I do that sometimes, but we each have a little bit different audience. And I think it's important to get news out there. So um, I found that some of the conversations on name pros can be really interesting. And people send me links to them as well. That's one of you know my resources. They say, hey, have you seen this? What's going on? And I'll look into it. You know, a lot of times on forums too, uh, well, you do a good job of piping in when it relates to your company, but a lot of companies aren't on there actively, and so I can alert them to it and say, hey, what's going on here? And then they can, you know, give their side of the story and that sort of thing as well. Another question I had for you is, how do you think you would describe the domain industry to somebody who's outside the industry? You know, if you look at it specifically as domain investing, I think the greatest analogy for me is real estate, right? right? We're buying and selling mm -hmm. and improving real estate. I think people get that, that resonates with right. people. There are a lot of caveats to mm -hmm. that that you get into, but I think that's the easiest way to explain it to someone and a way yep. they understand where they also don't say cyber squatter. You right. know, they're like, right. oh, investor. Mm -hmm. So Andrew, I, I know you invest in stocks and you also invest in domain names. I want to know why do you pick domain names as an investment vehicle versus a stock? So I, I graduated college right before the dot-com bubble burst. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I learned <laughs> investing then, I was like, I'm going to be good. I'm going to max out my 401k and this sort of stuff is that um, there's a lot, of, a lot of unknowns in stocks where now I basically, I, I should say, one, I don't invest, I'm not currently invested in any domain name company stocks to mm -hmm. avoid a conflict of interest. But I found you invest in a stock and then you find out they were committing fraud or right. something like that. Um, you know, we saw that with Lending Club, yep. uh, uh, Volkswagen, you know, mm -hmm. these sorts of things right. that as an investor you really have no way, and you really have to keep on top of them too. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Whereas with the domain name, I know what I'm getting. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not as efficient. I can't buy it one day and be guaranteed to sell it for about as much as right. the next day. So that is a downside. But I do see a lot of things I like about investing in domain names as opposed to stocks. Now, it's all about allocation. Right. Most of my money is in stock index mm -hmm. funds. Right. Uh, because, you know, I've learned throughout the years that that's what you do, that's right. the safest, and in the long run it works the best. 
But I think having domain names as an investment, I also invest in, in real estate. I have an investment in a sports bar in Austin. Uh -huh. um, I think it's all about diversifying. Right. And domain names to me are fun because there's the potential for that big return. Right. If you're investing in S&P 500, yes, it's gone up 10% in right. two months. That's great. But I'm talking about the, right. the 100, 200% yeah, exactly. in two days. Yep. You know, that's, always, that's the thrill of the chase yeah. that I think keeps a lot of people coming back. Yeah, exactly. Andrew, thanks a lot for taking your time to answer these questions and help everybody out. I Absolutely. really appreciate it. Joe, I and appreciate it. And I appreciate it to uh, Name Pros as well for yeah. doing these videos.